Hey guys, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to never miss the video of Techno Electrical. Hello friends, welcome to Techno Electrical. So today we are going to learn the construction of alternator. So let's start the topic construction of alternator. The construction of the alternator is basically same as that of the DC generator. In small alternators in which armature rotates and field remains stationary, the current is taken out from slip ring and pressures. And in large alternators, field rotates and armature remains stationary. So in this case the TC current is provided in the field with the help of slip rings for producing the poles in the field. So in DC generator the excitation current is taken with the same generator. But in case of alternator a small DC generator will be attached from alternator shaft so that DC current will produce continuously. So now let us see some important parts of an alternator and these are stator, rotor, exciter and damper or tempo winding. So let's start with stator. So this is a stator. So now this is a stator now the stator is a stationary part of an alternator and it is made up by joining thin laminated silicon steel strip together now in inner part of the stator some slots are cut these slots are either open type or semi closed type in which armature winding is placed. So now this stator welded or can be screwed to the frame so that it will prevent from vibration. So it is frame. Okay. Now the next is rotor. Rotor is a rotating part of the machine that is why it is called rotor. So here the rotors are of two types, silent pole rotor and non-silent pole rotor. So first of all we will see silent pole rotor. So this is a silent pole rotor. So these type of rotors are used for medium speed and low speed alternators. These type of rotors are projected out from the surface of the rotor core. These projected poles are made up of steel lamination to reduce eddy current losses. And in these type of rotors the poles are fitted by dovetail joints to a spider keyed to the shaft. The diameter of these rotors are larger and the length is small and the diameter of the frame is also large. Silent pole rotors have concentrated winding on the pole and field winding is done in these ports. Now the slots are cut for dampen winding in upper part of the pole. The damper winding is made up of copper bars and these bars are usually inserted parallel in the pole face to dump out the rotor oscillation during sudden changes in load condition. And the both ends of the winding is short circuited and will connect it to the 
ring these are the rings and now the next rotor is non salient pole type rotors these rotors are also known as cylindrical type rotors these rotors are used for very high speed alternators such as thermal power plant cylindrical rotors are made up of solid forging of high grade nickel chrome molybdenum steel so now in about 2/3 of the rotor periphery slots are cut at regular interval and is parallel to the shaft the dc field winding is done in these slots the dc field winding is done in these slots this winding is of distributed type so now you can see this unslotted portion this portion of the rotor forms two or four pole faces the cylindrical rotor machine has comparatively small diameter and long axle length such a construction limit a centrifugal force thus cylindrical rotor is particularly useful in high speed machines these type of alternators have two or four poles on the rotor now this type of construction provided a good mechanical strength and permits more accurate dynamic balance these rotors are smooth so the windage losses are less and the operation is less noisy because of uniform air gap cylindrical rotor synchronous generators are called turbo alternators or turbo generators these machines are built in number of ratings from 10 kva to over 1500 kva now the next one is exciter so the meaning of the exciter is that an instrument which is used dc supply to produce constant magnetic field in an alternator this instrument is mainly an dc generator which will be constructed to produce dc supply according to the requirement of an alternator the excitation voltage may be about 200 volt to 750 volts and only one variable resistance is connected in series to field winding with the help of these variable resistances we can control the output voltage of alternator by increasing or decreasing the exciter voltage 